Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and learn how to make super cool, fun, beautiful looking 3D illustrations right in Figma. There are a lot of amazing, cool techniques that you can use to create the effects that you want, and I'm gonna show you quite a lot of them. But before I get into that, if you haven't checked out my mega product design course for beginners, make sure to check it out. Link will be down below in the description. And of course, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna primarily make two types of illustrations. The first one is gonna be this ruler icon and you can check out this guy called Sandor. He makes like super fun, beautiful looking illustrations in, uh, I don't know what tools he uses, but he does it really well. This is sort of a simpler one, but there are also a lot of very interesting things that you can learn, very small stuff which basically shows attention to detail. So for example, this rounding that you see is not really the normal corner radius. There's a special effect and I'm gonna show you what that is. Um, and then I'm also going to recreate this one over here, uh, which sort of has this frosted glass, uh, you know, 3D effect, okay? This is gonna be a little bit more complicated, but I'm gonna show you everything from scratch, so it's gonna be super fun. Okay, so let's jump into Figma and get started. Now I already have these uh, prepared so that, and you can see that what I've created here, uh, the one I've created on the right is very similar to how it looks on the left and you know, the same thing over here as well, right? So um, you can pretty much create the same effect if you do it correctly. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna start off with uh, this one. I'm gonna keep these on the side because I might want to reference some values, okay? So let's first of all, go ahead and get a frame. Uh, so I'm just gonna get a frame uh, and uh, this is 1000 or, you know, let's just, uh, yeah, we can make sure this is the same width. So 1504, 1128, 1504 and 1128. Okay, so we've got something that's the same size. Uh, this is a white color um, as well. So we can check that. So you can see that this is a pure white color. So we can leave that as it is. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and create the shape. So I'm gonna press R on my keyboard to get the rectangle tool. And we're gonna go ahead and just uh, make sure that we align this and we can move this over to the right side. I'm holding down command and the arrow keys to move my one pixel. You can use uh, control if you're on Windows. Okay, and then, so this is 602. The height is also gonna be 602. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add some rounding. Now, as you can see, there is this value called as corner smoothing and a lot of people don't know what this is and I'm gonna tell you what this is. So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and just add the radius over here to get something that we match, okay? So I'm just gonna come down until it sort of snaps in place, okay? So maybe 152. Now you might think that this is complete, but ideally it's not. If I go ahead and reduce the opacity of this, you can see that we have a little bit of a gap over here, right? And that's where corner smoothing comes into place. Now, if you have an iPhone and you've seen app icons, they usually have a little bit of a corner smoothing to it. It's not really just a normal radius. It has some nice bend as well. So as you can see, it says iOS over here and the iOS value is 60. So if I can drop that to 60, you can now see that as I move this, it gets that extra corner smoothing over there. And now there's no gap there at all, you know, on the right side. So this is pretty cool. And you can try this when you're creating stuff. Okay, so now we have our app icon. I'm gonna move this over to the side so we can actually see what's happening. And now we have to add, uh, it has some sort of a texture that you can see over here, some sort of a, a wood texture. So um, I'm gonna quickly add that. So I'm gonna go to Unsplash um, and I'm gonna open that up. Okay, and make sure you don't select select anything because we want to import a high resolution image because if you select an element and you uh, search for something, it applies it on the layer directly and it gets imported as a low quality. So you just want to make sure you don't click anything and you can type in wooden texture um, and then we can find something that suits. Um, we can scroll down, something interesting. Um, I mean, you can pick anything that you want. Uh, actually, I don't know what I picked over here. This seems to be uh, a little bit of an interesting thing. So come down over here to the rectangle. Ah, okay, so I, I guess I picked this one. So I'm gonna go and pick the same one as well, which I found over here. So I'm just gonna make sure I don't select anything. I'm gonna click on this and that gets added over here. Now, a lot of people make mistakes by masking this and using some mask effects, which is too crazy. It's It, it doesn't really have to be that crazy. All you have to do is select this. You can click here on this empty area and you can press uh, Control C or Command C to copy that. I'm gonna delete that, I'm gonna come over here and paste, right? That's about it. So basically it's just one rectangle 
and everything is there in the fill layer. I'm going to delete the other one, which we don't need. And uh, it's done. Okay. So next, I'm going to go click on this button to add another layer on top of that. I'm going to set this to 100. And I'm going to click on this and change that to a linear gradient. And now I'm just going to pick the colors from here. Okay, this is a little bit of a lighter color and this is a little bit of a darker color. And then I'm going to go ahead and just reduce down the opacity of the linear layer, right, to something very low. So for example, something like 95 works. Let me just quickly check what I applied over here. Uh, this was 96. So, you know, 95, 96 doesn't really matter. Okay, next. Once we have that, we can go ahead and create uh, this rectangle. So this should be fairly easy. I'm going to select this and uh, come over here and then this over to the left side. That's over here. And we're going to come down and over here as well. Okay. And now this doesn't have the corner smoothing radius. It just has a simple radius. So I'm just going to apply that and I'm going to get the value that I need. So probably around 30 pixels, which is, which is fine. Okay. Now the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the fill and add a stroke. Okay. And I'm going to add, uh, increase the radius so that I match it. So that's around seven pixels over there. Okay. Now if you want, maybe we can just add a little bit of radius corner smoothing as well. Uh, but you can see that it just distorts it too much. So I'm just going to leave it to zero as it is. Maybe if you want, you can add a little bit. So maybe we just say 10% um, or 20% also is fine, I guess. So select that and choose 20%. Doesn't really matter. Uh, it, it, it's quite okay. Okay. So now that we have this, I'm going to probably move this down and we can see that this has, uh, some sort of a color over here and it's a radius. So it's a, it's a linear gradient. So I'm going to go ahead to the stroke. And the interesting thing is you can add linear a gradient to strokes as well and not just fill. And I'm just going to color pick the colors. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to select the other one and then uh, I'm going to pick this color. Okay. So it's not really the same color. There's a little bit of a difference. Okay. And the next thing I'm going to do is you can see that it has a little bit of this, you know, shine effect, right? Uh, on the top. So for that, I'm going to select the sh uh, stroke. I'm going to click on effects and then I'm going to choose uh, inner shadow. And when you choose inner shadow, you get this sort of a thing. Uh, first thing, I'm going to change the color of this to white. And I'm going to make it 100% so we can actually see what we're dealing with. Okay. So now you can see that it feels like there's a light source that's coming on top and it's hitting it. Now we have two values, the Y value and the blur value. So um, you just have to play around with what makes sense. I'm going to set the Y value to one and then probably the blur value to something like three because we want a little bit of a shine effect and not quite a bit. Let me see what I applied over here um, in mine. Uh, so I added around, um, oh no, I think that was the wrong one. That was the wrong layer. Yeah, I think this one, no. Oh, you have this one. So this is around two and three and, you know, 80% opacity, right? So I'm going to apply the same thing over here as well. So I'm going to select this one and then it's a 2%, sorry, two pixels on the Y value and then a three pixel blur. Okay, perfect. Okay, so the next thing is I'm going to create this white section that we see over here. Okay, so I'm going to press R on my keyboard and then I'm going to go ahead and add this over here. And then we can go ahead and apply, just make sure we get these right. Um, so actually, let me go ahead and put this over here. Okay. And so now I can sort of measure it. So this is around 12 pixel. Then this is also around 12 pixel and the right side also we need uh, 12 pixel. There we go. And then we're going to bring this all the way to the down until we hit 12 pixel again. So there we go. We have 12 pixels. Okay. Perfect. Now, um, the next thing is obviously we want to add that rounding. So to make sure that we get the right rounding, let's just go and add that rounding. So around 18 pixel and I want to add the 20 pixel here as well. So, uh, actually, you know what? I don't want to add this 20 pixel. I'm just going to set that to zero and I'll select this and we have 18. Okay. That's pretty good. Next. Um, obviously this is going to be white color. So I'm going to, you know, make this white, uh, perfect. And you can see that we have um, this effect where it's becoming from white and it's sort of, you know, fading out over here. So there are quite a lot of ways to do this. So the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to bring this back down here. Okay. And I'm, let me actually move these two over to the side so we can see what's happening. I'm going to select this rectangle that we made. 
Okay, I'm going to copy that and paste that. Okay, so basically I have a duplicate of this rectangle. I'm going to get rid of the stroke um, and uh, uh, the inner shadow as well. And I'm going to add a fill. Okay, and obviously I'm going to move this over to the top because as you can see, it's a fill, but this uh, white thing is in the way. So I'm just going to move this over to the top. Okay, and obviously make sure you use shortcuts. If you don't know what the shortcut is, you can find them over here. And I'm going to apply a white color gradient. So I'm going to go to linear and then I'm going to make the first one white and the second one white as well. Um, and then just make sure that everything is 100 in the beginning. Now for the first one, I'm going to drop it, you know, quite down to zero. Okay. And for the last one, I'm just going to start bringing it down until we can start seeing things over here. Okay. So until we can sort of start seeing things. Now, the other thing I can do is I can actually select this um, white color and actually apply this, you know, this pink color that we have, all right? And then start reducing, dropping the opacity there as well until we can sort of see the transparency and get the same effect, okay? So I'm gonna select uh, all of the layers that we have and then bring this down and let's see if we can sort of match it to that. Okay, you can see that there's a lot of more gap over here. So going back over here, I'm just going to select this and increase the value. So to say something like um, 95, all right? You can see, you know, it's be, we're able to see the background as well to a pretty decent extent, maybe 96. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there we go. That's, uh, that's looking pretty good. Okay. The next thing is we have these holes. So I'm going to press R on my keyboard and I'm just going to go and create these holes. So, okay. And then I'm going to set uh, the rounding of this to 100. Move this over to the side, move this over to the side. I'm, I'm holding down Alt and Shift on my keyboard or Option Shift on my Mac to uh, duplicate it and move it at the same axis. So make sure you hold down Shift as well. And this is gonna be in the center. And I'm gonna just extend this one and then move this over here. Okay, so now we have these five things. I'm gonna select all of this and press Control G to group them. And now we have this beautiful group, okay. Now we can start moving things over here uh, and placing them on our logo. So I'm gonna move this over here to the center. I'm gonna select all these three items and then move this over all here to the center. And then I'm gonna select this one and I'm going to uh, bring this over here as well. There we go, perfectly in the center, okay? Um, so now we wanna make this cutout on this white layer. So ideally what you want to do is couple of things, okay? So make sure you go ahead and you duplicate this so that if you need any layers, you won't lose it, okay? So what we want is we want this to be cut out, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna select um, this gradient layer that we have. I'm gonna move that to the bottom and then select these two layers, okay? And now you're gonna do a little bit of a trial and error to see what works, okay? So this one is on the top and then this one is on the bottom and you can come on here and click on this third icon and then you can choose subtract element and it just worked for us, which was pretty great. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this back on top, okay? Uh, make sure it's in the center, this looks fine. But the, the other thing here is that you can see that it's not fully transparent. It's got a little bit of translucent effect, right? But here it feels like it's just like completely transparent. So what I'm gonna do is, first of all, I'm gonna move this to the, towards the back because we want this to be in the front, okay? I'm gonna go and click on this layer, which was the layer that was the cutout. I'm gonna duplicate that and I'm going to ungroup it because I basically want these sticks again, right? I want these sticks again. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select each of uh, these sticks and I'm gonna click on this button to break all of them. And the first one and the second one, I'm gonna set that to be zero. And then I'm gonna go ahead and then just uh, push them down. Now, if I do it individually, it works. But if I do all of them uh, together, it sort of distorts everything and we don't want that. So I'm gonna select each of these one by one and then just move them down here, move them down here. and then move them down here as well. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna select all of this, make sure I set the color of this to be white, and then I'm going to drop the opacity to something until we get what we want, right? So I don't know what values I picked over there. Let me see what the values that I picked there were. So it was around 30%, right? So I selected everything and then dropped the opacity uh, down to 30%. Okay, that's pretty good, okay. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and do that as well. So drop the opacity down of each of these um, to be 30%. Okay, and then I'm gonna select this and move this back on top. And then now we have something that looks a lot much similar to um, what we have. Okay, if you come over here, you can see we have this, you know, this white line that just goes over everything, which, which looks, you know, quite rather interesting. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a white line. So we can quickly create that as well. So I'm going to bring this back down again. I'm going to press R on my keyboard and we're going to go ahead and just create this rectangle. Let me just see how far it is. Okay, it's quite near to the top section. So I'm going to select that and move that over here. And then we're going to make this white. Okay. And then obviously we're going to go ahead and reduce the opacity to like 20%. And I can also select the FX layer and I can choose an option which is the layer blur and that blurs it out quite a bit, okay? And if I want, I can go ahead and increase the opacity like 30%, and there we go, this is looking, maybe 20% is the right number. Okay, so there we go, it, it looks it looks pretty good. So then I'm gonna go ahead and bring this back on top, all right, make sure that it's in the center, and we are pretty much done, and if you can see, both of these look quite similar. Uh, we do have a couple of other things that we want to do. For example, we want to add a drop shadow down here and we also want to add a drop shadow to this. Okay, now I'm actually going to steal the values for the drop shadows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and click on this and then uh, I'm going to get the drop shadow value. I'm just going to click on this and copy that. I'm going to show you what the values are, of course, and then paste it. So basically what's happening here and a lot of people ask me how to make good drop shadows. Well, this is how you do it. First of all, you don't want to use a pure black drop shadow. Now in this case, we're creating this glow effect. So which is why the color is very light, right? So if I set this to 100, you can see in how it is. So you want to have a color that is similar to your background and then just drop the opacity to whatever you think makes a lot of sense, okay? But if you are going for a little bit of a realistic drop shadow, you obviously don't want to have something black. Now there's nothing wrong with this, but always make sure you have some, some shade dark shade of the the color so a dark shade you know something like this also works and then you can draw, reduce the opacity even more if you don't want never go pure black it's not really nice so yeah uh, in this case we're going for that glow effect uh, so make sure you do this now the other thing is the y value so if i go ahead and set the blur to zero you can see that we have quite a bit of a distance over here um and we also have a negative spread. So if I set the spread to zero, you can see what's happening. And if I reduce down the spread, you can see that it sort of goes behind. Um, it gives a little bit of a perspective effect, which is very nice. So I'm gonna set the spread to minus 10. Now a good rule of thumb is whatever value your Y is, your blur should be 1.5 times or two times or basically more than 1.5 times of your Y value. So in this case, if my Y value is 40, my blur value 1.5 times is going to be 60. Uh, but usually the higher the number, the higher I would take the value. So instead of making 1.5, I'm going to make it two this time. So then you have a much realistic shadow, okay? So always take your Y value and your blur value, it should be 1.5 times your Y value or two times or more than that, right? So I can even make this 120 as well, but then maybe that's fine. Maybe that's not fine. Uh, I don't want it to blur out so much. So I'm going to set that back to um, 80%, 80 pixels. Okay, so there we go. We have that. And now coming to our shadow over here. Now here for this shadow, we have like a realistic shadow that we have. This isn't a glow. So you obviously it's dark over here. So I'm going to go and copy the values that I have. All right, so I'm going to copy this and then paste that over here, okay? And you can see that here I've used 40 and 40. All right, now I could have made this 80 as well, but maybe 80 is too much. I'm gonna maybe make that 60, okay? And uh, maybe I would make this even 30, for example, right? So we make it double. And then as you can see over here, I've used like a little bit of a dark uh, brown shad color over here instead of the pure black, all right, makes it, gives it a realistic touch and then obviously reduce down the opacity to a very low number as you see over here. And with that, we're almost done. Now there is another thing that I usually do which I do as a finishing touch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this base layer that we have, I'm gonna copy that and paste it and bring it all the way to the top. I'm gonna to remove all the effects. So I'm gonna remove the image, I'm gonna remove the drop shadow, okay? And I'm also gonna make this 100%. 
okay now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a radial gradient okay so i'm going to make this to a radial gradient and i'm going to make both the colors of this to be white okay uh, and the second one i'm actually going to drop the opacity down to zero and i'm going to move this up all the way to the top so now we have this nice shine effect okay and then what you can do is uh, i don't know what the value i picked was so let me see uh, if i turn this on it is around 40 percent okay so I'm gonna select this and then just drop the opacity to 40%. Uh, and then we now have this like super nice shine effect. Um, I think maybe I got the values wrong. So let me just check. Um, yeah, this is 100 and then you have zero and then 40%. Uh, looks about right, but this looks quite sharper to be very honest. Oh, also you can see that I changed the blending mode to be soft light. So you can select that and you can go through multiple blending modes. You can go to darken, multiply, color burn. Now there's a lot of science behind which one works for what colors as well. But basically if you're choosing white, you want to pick between these six ones. So lighten, screen, color dodge, overlay and soft light. Right now overlay adds this little bit of a yellowish or like a richer color. Um, but I'm going to go with just soft light and uh, maybe we can increase it to like 50% or just 40% is fine. So now you have this very nice shine effect and you can see it's very similar to um, what we have over here. Perfect. So now with that being said, we can move on to the next one. This is going to be quite simple and even interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of this. So we have this and I'm going to delete everything that we have. I'm going to delete all of this. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to copy um, this one over here. I'm going to copy that and paste it over here. Uh, make sure that we set this back to 100 and then we just make it like a normal fill color and then obviously set this back to normal. Okay, so uh, this one is a little bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make sure that I match both of them correctly. So there we go. And then I'm going to increase this over here and then increase this over here as well. And obviously we want to change the radius because the it's bigger. All right, so around 140 looks good. Okay, now I'm going to take this over here and move this or maybe I'm just going to bring it over here for now so that we can see what's happening. Now we're going to show, I'm going to show how to make this a frosted glass effect, which is like super fun. Now what you need to do is sort of understand how this is working in terms of physics and what's actually happening. So you can see here that on the right side, it's getting less transparent. Okay, and in the inner side, it's more opaque. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and apply a radial gradient. Okay, and I'm going to pick the same colors. So I'm going to pick this color and I'm going to pick this color. And for the radial gradient, the end stop, I'm going to make that zero. Okay, so now you can see that it's sort of giving that very similar effect that you see over here. It's, you know, sort of um, opaque in the center and then it fades out in the end. If you want, we can go ahead and... Um, increase this as well so then the because the opaque part starts a little bit later all right that's pretty cool the next thing you want to do is you want to add an effect and you want to choose something called as a background blur now what the background blur does is it blurs the background and not the layer so to give you an example let me say let me, let's assume that we have two of these options if i choose um fx and i choose layer blur and I increase the value, you can see that it's blurring the layer. But if I click on the effect and then I choose background blur, it doesn't blur the layer. It blurs the background. Now, the reason we're not able to see this blur effect is because we need to reduce down the opacity of the fill layer. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to start reducing the opacity down and nothing happens. And so in order for the blur background to work, obviously we need to increase the value from four to something significant. So let's say 100. Now, as you can see, we are getting the blur effect, but the problem is we're not able to actually see it properly. And so what we ideally want to do is we can select this radial gradient and I'm gonna push this back to the beginning. I'm gonna select this and move this down all the way outside until we can see the edges, okay? And now you can see that wherever I put this, we get that nice blur effect and looks and that looks pretty cool. Let me go quickly check and see what the values that I had were. So I reduced the radius all the way down to 10 
and then I added inner shadows and the background blur which was 100 as well. So I'm going to go ahead and make this even lesser. So I make it 10. The lesser you make it, the more you can see the blur. And to quickly demonstrate that, let me go ahead and add unsplash and I'm going to run it. And let's just pick some sort of uh, an abstract color, something vibrant. So I'm going to perfectly get this one. And let's see how this thing looks. I'm going to just make a copy of that and paste that over here. And as you can see, that blur effect looks super cool and super awesome. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and blast this up to even like a bigger number, like 200. It looks super amazing. And uh, you can go ahead and create amazing effects with this. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and probably make this to 150 as well. It doesn't really matter in this case because the there's not too much contrast. Okay. Next, next I'm going to add some inner shadows. Now for the inner shadows, I'm actually going to copy the values itself because I don't want to experiment. So I'm going to select these two. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste that over here. I'm going to show you what the values are. So the first inner shadow is something that is very simpler. And as you can see, we have some little bit on the left side and then we have a lot more on the bottom, right? So that's why I've created two of them. So the first one over here um, is has a value of four and then a blur of 40 and a white of 25%. And the other one has a little bit of a stronger one and it is more towards the bottom side, which is around 24, blur is 40, maybe I wanna make this 60, and then spread minus three. If I set the spread to zero, you can see that it's you know coming in too much. So I don't want it to come in too much. I'm gonna push that out a little bit. So maybe even minus 10, something like that works. All right, and uh, that's looking uh, pretty good. Now, the next thing is we also have this uh, layer over here, which is sort of adding as this highlight. So this is a very simple layer again. Uh, I'm gonna copy that, I'm gonna paste that, I'm gonna reuse it, I'm gonna show you how I did it. Uh, there we go, okay? So basically what's happening is if I ungroup this, we have two layers. So there is one layer that looks like this and the other one, which is just on top of that. And then I selected these two and then I set it to subtract. So I sort of got this layer. Okay, and uh, to get back the values, let me just see what values I had. So the I had like a linear gradient, as you can see, it was white on the top and it was zero in the bottom. And then I added like a 20% uh, thing because if I had set it to 100, obviously it's too strong. So I'm gonna set this to like 20. And it also has like this inner shadow over here, this little bit of a white fade. You can see that white shine over here. Uh, so I'm applying that inner shadow as well. It's just a bit, small amount of four and maybe blur 30 is too much. So maybe we can drop that to like 20 and uh, that's looking pretty good. Now we're very close to what we want. Obviously I'm gonna delete these two, right? And now we have some drop shadows that we need to add, okay? So I've added the drop shadow to the group as a whole. So I can look at the drop shadow values. It's around 100 and it's 40 and 120 and this is black. I can go ahead and make this a little, you know, darkish blue, uh, sorry, darkish brown, you can see over here. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and select that, copy that effect, select the rectangle and then paste that. So now we have like a very nice shadow. We also have this interesting other effects over here. So let me tell you how to create this. So what you want to do is I've created two circles. I've actually created three of them, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that. And basically what the, how this works is if I show you one by one, uh, let, let me take the smallest one. So first of all, to create an oval, you just press R on your keyboard, not R actually, you wanna choose uh, ellipse on your keyboard and then just go ahead and create something like that, okay? And once you do that, uh, you can see I've added a little bit of a layer blur over here and let me hide the effect so we can show you what's happening. I've added a linear gradient. So I've picked the color to be um, this color. You can also make this white and reduce down the opacity, but I just chose to have like, uh, an actual brown color. And this is probably around gonna be 70% inside. And then as it comes out, you can see that I've gone ahead and reduced this to zero. Okay, so I can even bring this in so you can see that it's you know around zero. And we want it to blur like this. So that's why I added the layer blur to blur it. And now we get this nice shine effect. Now the other one is also the similar properties. If I remove the layer blur, and you can see that this is a gradient as well, the same properties, right? So you make it 100 and then you move it out and then you make it zero, all right? And then I've reduced the opacity to 30 and then added the layer blur. And here is another one. This one is pretty much the same thing as the previous one, but this is a little bit bigger and I've made it 10. Because when there's a drop shadow, there are multiple layers of drop shadow that you ideally want to use. And there's no right or wrong answer. It's about what just looks good.
Okay, now if you want, we can add this shine effect that we added over here as well. So I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste that shine effect. Or uh, actually, uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the layer. I'm gonna copy that and paste it on top. And I'm gonna remove all the effects. We don't need any of the effects uh, because I'm going to copy this radial gradient. I'm gonna paste it on top. Uh, I'm going to, whoops, I think I selected the wrong layer. Ah, there we go. Put this all the way to the top, paste that. Uh, set this to soft light and drop the opacity to 40%. Okay, so now we have like a very nice effect. Okay, now you can see that it's very similar to what we have over here. Now it's a little darker on the top area. So what I can do is instead of making this white, I can probably make it like a darker color and make this also a darker color or maybe make this white and I'm gonna bring it over here and maybe change uh, these to be different ones. So color dodge, screen, lighten. Uh, I'm not really sure, right? So maybe I'm just gonna set it to soft light for now and then maybe just bump up the opacity over here. Uh, I don't think this is working. So I'm gonna choose another approach where I will go ahead and uh, make like a, uh, let's make like, like a circle over here on top. Uh, and then, or, or rather, let me just copy the one that we have. I'm gonna copy that, select that, move that towards the bottom, okay? And uh, I'm gonna bring that over here, and then I'm just gonna scale this up like a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna scale this up, and then I'm gonna quite drastically reduce down the opacity to like 10% or something, uh, and then you can see that it's doing, it's not doing a really great job, to be very honest. Uh, so maybe I'm going to increase and expand this quite a bit and maybe I'm going to make the colors a little darker. So maybe make it black, maybe make this also black, All right? And now it, it looks a little bit better, I guess. Um, it's really hard to recreate a lot of the effects over here, but I've done a great job. I honestly, I don't like this. So I'm just going to delete it and then we're going to keep it um, as this is. Okay. So you can see we pretty much came to what we initially had. Maybe we want to make uh, the inner shadow of this a little stronger. So the, let me just check which one shadow this is, right? So uh, ideally what we want to do is we want to reduce down the spread to make that zero. Um, we can add another layer of inner shadow that we have over here. So I can copy um, this one, all right? Which was basically the large one and I'm going to go ahead and drop that down to like 20% and then the Y to maybe like minus 10 or something, or maybe even minus five. So or maybe even minus two, okay? So now we have a, like a nice inner shadow over here and uh, that looks uh, pretty good. So using very simple techniques, you can go ahead and create some amazing illustrations over here. It doesn't really have to be this complex. All you have to know is how to use certain layers. All right, so that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And I'll see you guys in my next video. So then take care and bye-bye.